When young offenders are accused of crime after crime, we ask ourselves the same question. Where are the families? Well, we spoke with some of them who say they're at their wit's end, desperate for the justice system to do its job. Every morning across the state, families and children file in through the revolving doors of justice. And the sad reality is these are kids that should be in school. And all we want is just the help and it's not forthcoming. We've come up against um, a brick wall. I would like to invite the Premier to come and sit at my table. Tonight, we're taking you to Children's Court, where young offenders are hauled before a magistrate for their alleged crimes. The law prevents us from actually going inside to report on their cases, but their families and carers tell us they too feel let down by a broken justice system. These children have to be made accountable for their actions. There are consequences. We can't show you her face, but this grandmother is a regular visitor to the children's court. Today, she's come to support her grandson, who's behind bars. He's been charged with arson, deprivation of liberty, um, stealing cars, breaking and entering. Um, stealing. So is he a repeat offender? Yes, extremely, yes. Just keeps breaching bail. I mean, it's a joke. These kids look at it as a big joke. The video that you're watching is her 16-year-old grandson and his mate allegedly stealing a car in suburban Brisbane. I totally sympathise for the victims because we were one as well when he stole our car. Here he is, unlicensed, taking his grandparents' car. It was damaged during his wild joyride and grandma was so furious she pressed charges. He's also trashed her home in a violent rage. They come to the courts, they get a slap across the wrist or whatever, and the judges say, you know, oh, if I see you here again, I'm going to, yeah, well, do it, but they're not doing it. He has ADHD and autism, but Grandma won't give up, even taking her desperate plea to the Premier. She really just needs to stop saying that, you know, like, oh, it's under control, it's under control. It's not under control. They are children, but they end up growing into men, and if they continue on, they're just going to end up being adult criminals. I even sent an email to her office as well, still waiting for a response. Now, it's going back about a couple of months now. These are complex issues, but these are also national issues. They are not unique to Queensland. They are not unique to Queensland. They are happening across the country. Putting children in the adult watch houses? Yeah. What do you think? He's been in for 28 days straight. That messed with him majorly. There is something seriously wrong. Anne Hollands is the National Children's Commissioner. The current approach to addressing youth crime is not working to fix the problem. And that would include the families of the, uh, the young people themselves who often say that they have asked for help early on and not been able to find it. It's very frustrating being the kinship carer. It's a lot of sleepless nights lot of uh, stress. This woman took her 15 year old nephew in to try and save him from the system. It's definitely broken. His attention is a holiday camp for him. What kind of a rap sheet are you dealing with? I'm dealing with everything um, from the car stealing of cars, the break and enter, breaching the bail conditions, um, you name it I'm dealing with it. People are always so quick to judge the parents, the carers, asking where are they? What are they doing? Well, if you really want to know, you can come and see what I do 24 seven. I'm constantly in contact with co-respondents team. I'm constantly in contact with youth justice. Locking them up and the punishment, it's not working. I don't know where Anastasia Palaszczuk thinks it's working because she can come and live a day in my shoes. Outside another court, this mother is just at the start of her journey with the justice system. Her 13-year-old autistic son had his first brush with the law after sneaking out. He was all hooded up. He had um, just his eyes showing, mask on. 
his scissors and a knife in his bag and he was caught by the police and fortunately they let him off um, but you know it was quite scary being as a as his mother too to hear but without a criminal conviction she's struggling to find intervention programs to help him you know what do i do with my my son how do i intervene because he's at this vulnerable age and um there's just nothing out there there's no programs well there is but not until they've it's become a very escalated situation which for me is just backwards taking the children placing them away from um removing them from their so-called friends, taking away social media, no internet, and then teaching them life skills, teaching them trades and everything like that. That's a brilliant idea. And is your grandchild participating in, in courses? When he's in a controlled environment. Otherwise, no. No, couldn't be bothered. He really couldn't because I don't have to now. Because he doesn't have to because he's not made. Do you think he'll ever break the cycle? I don't know. We sit at home sometimes and just wait for that phone call. Either A, can you please come and identify a body? B, your son slash grandson has just killed somebody or yeah. I really, really don't know what's going to happen. I think we need to paradigm shift and, and have um, more hands on deck to give them hope for the future. As we've done each time we cover youth crime in Queensland, we asked the Premier, Anastasia Palaszczuk, to come on and chat. Again, the answer was no.